Hello and welcome to this Innova Systems webinar on SOLIDWORKS external content. So the first question is, what is external content? Well, in SOLIDWORKS there's sort of four different areas where the external content can come from. So we've got SOLIDWORKS content and this is uh, an area of the design library where you can download additional blocks for your drawings, you can download parts for use with uh, circuit works, you can download additional parts to work with routing and also you can download additional weldment profiles. We then have 3D Content Central. This is controlled by Dassault Systems, uh, also accessible via the uh, design library. And this is a, an external website where you can download a whole load of uh, content that other people have generated. A lot of it is supplier content, admittedly a lot of American suppliers because that's where it first started. There's also a whole load of stuff that other SOLIDWORKS customers uploaded. Uh, in 2013, we've also got Modo appearances for PhotoView 360. Now, PhotoView 360 comes with a whole load of appearances anyway, but there is a company called Luxology which have done tens of thousands of appearances, and you can go and grab hold of those uh, via the Modo website. And then also we have non-SolidWorks websites. So these are websites that have no direct affiliation with SolidWorks, but have uploaded models from their users. Uh, the one I'm going to be using today is GrabCAD. Um, but there are many, many, many websites across the uh, internet. Uh, for example, there's also free CAD models and there's the Hefeli website doing handles and uh, hinges and things. So we're going to start uh, with SOLIDWORKS content and then we're sort of going to work through them. Uh, so if I just jump into SOLIDWORKS, we've got a uh, very simple sketch there that I want to put a structural member on. So I'm in my Wellwoods toolbar, I go to structural member, We've only got ANSI inch and ISO to start with. We've only got a small number of types of uh, weldment. And then within each type, we've only got two or three or four different sizes of actual weldment profile. Now, this might not be enough. If I want some more, over in the Design Library tab of the Task Pane, we've got SOLIDWORKS content. Now, this has blocks, as I mentioned, uh, which have got electrical hydraulic blocks for your drawings. You've got circuit works parts. You've got routing and you've got a number of different um, standards you can download routing components for. And then we've got weldment and we've got our weldment profiles. Now, I'm going to use BSI today. I haven't used BSI before. And what it's saying is it's saying control click to download the file. So you control click it. I'm going to save it to my desktop for simplicity. And what happens is that will download the zip file to our desktop. So if I go to my desktop, we can now see the BSI zip folder. And what we need to do is extract this. Now we need to extract this to the correct location. So if you just watch carefully while I browse through to that, we're in our C drive. We're going to program files. We're looking basically for the SOLIDWORKS folders. Um, so down here we've got my SOLIDWORKS 2013 uh, and then SOLIDWORKS. Inside there we've got the Lang folder and then English and then Weldment profiles. And you can see I've got ANSI inch and I've got ISO. So I'm going to extract it to the Weldment Profiles folder. Hit OK and let that extract. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, browse to that location as well. Just let that finish. There we go. So again, like I said, C Program Files. SOLIDWORKS 2013, SOLIDWORKS, LANG, ENGLISH, WELDMENT PROFILES. Now the reason I wanted to come and show you that it's actually extracted to the right place is there's a particular layout you've got to make sure your folders follow. The top folder within WELDMENT PROFILES is the standard name. The next folders are the uh, type of uh, WELDMENT and then inside there you have the profiles. So we just need to go and double check that the BSI one looks right. So BSI, types of uh, beam and then the profiles. If you don't have the folders uh, laid out correctly, it won't appear uh, in SOLIDWORKS correctly. So if we just jump back to SOLIDWORKS, we'll choose our structural member. Now see I've got BSI in my list, and I can choose, let's choose an RSJ, and I'll choose a relatively small one, and I can now put my RSJ around my weldment. So it's very simple to get hold of the additional profiles and then have all of the sizes you're used to having. Um, because the ones that come with SOLIDWORKS are, are limited for installation reasons. So I'll accept that. Now, the other the other item I mentioned, 3D content. Now, why would we want to do 3D content? Well, a lot of times we end up wanting to make our scenes look realistic. So this is something that we did for a customer of ours. 
and uh, they make they make wooden furniture. And what we're trying to do is make the rendering look realistic. So put their furniture into a room that looks real. Uh, and to do that, you might end up downloading a whole lot of stuff. So we've got speakers, we've got TV, we've got satellite receivers, and we've got a sofa. Now, some stuff you can model quite quickly yourself and will look relatively okay. So this, this coffee table in the corner was just modeled very quickly. It's a very simple table, but it looks like a piece of furniture. The same with the mirror and the lamp. They're both just modeled very quickly. But something like the sofa or the TV would take a lot more effort. Now, a lot of times these are commercial products, so somebody has probably made them. There's a model out there, and we can go and download it ourselves. So, SolidWorks content, we're going to go and look for our TV and our sofa. If I come back, I've got a model here that's missing TV and sofa, coincidentally. So we're going to go and see if we can find those models to insert them. So, again, if we go into the design library, this time we're going to have a look in uh, 3D Content Central. And we're going to go to the supplier content page, and then we're going to load up uh, all the categories. This loads up in a web page. Um, 3D Content Central, as I said, run by Dassault, and we're going to look for the TV. So I search for TV, and it will, in a second, give me a view of all of them. So we've got a number of TVs here. We've got a Philips. We've got a—I'm not even going to try and pronounce that—a Samsung and an Insignia, and then we've got a 50-inch TV unnamed, and then we go into some other items which may or may not be related to TV, but have TV in the uh, the name, for example, like this T. Now we've got a very big space to fill, so I'm going to choose this 52 inch Philips. Um, if we click on this, it then takes us to a page. Uh, there is a preview uh, which you can have, which is a little rotatable preview. I don't have the correct player installed in Firefox, but I can download it relatively simple, simply. Now to configure and download, you'll see I need to uh, log in. When I click this, it'll take me to a login page. You do need an account. It's completely free. Uh, it's basically just so they've got some details for you. They don't spam at all, I promise. Um, so you can see I've been here before, amazingly enough. And if I just type in the password, and then I'll log in. So now what you'll see is we can download it in 3D format or 2D format. We can also choose which version of 20, which version of SolidWorks we want to download it for. I'm going to choose 13. I don't want to rate it. Although it is run by uh, Dassault, uh, SolidWorks isn't the only format. You can get it in also in Katia, and you can get it in SAT formats as well. So if you need to use it um, in other products, you can also access data here. I, of course, am going to choose SolidWorks. Then we'll choose to download that. And what we can do is I can either drag and drop this link in or I can download the file. So if I make that a bit smaller, I can just drag and drop. Uh, it's going to ask me where it's going to save it. Uh, so if I say, let's say the desktop again, just for simplicity. So there's my TV. Um, if we go back to my main room, what I can do is I can now insert my TV. into the model and I believe that's where it's appeared down there which is a very helpful position for the TV oh, that's because I've gone and fixed it so let's shift that off the model and then we can mate it into position so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the back panel and the front of my uh, unit and mate those together and then I can just drag it up into the approximate position that I want it to be into. So there we go, it's coming. You notice it's got no um, uh, appearances applied to it. So this would be the next stage setting up to make your room look real. You set up the appearances uh, for the part. So that is how we get hold of stuff using um, 3D Content Central. Um, and you can obviously, there's loads and loads of stuff there. I don't want to go into details on what there is. There is lots of stuff. The next option we had was um, looking for non-SolidWorks websites. So I was going to use GrabCAD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back to um, my web browser. GrabCAD, very simple to find. GrabCAD.com. We'll go to there. Just let that load up. Now I'm going to go to the library because I've got a whole load of components in there. The library is just a list of all the stuff that people have uploaded. There is a massive range of models, not all of them available in SOLIDWORKS format. So you do have to be a little bit careful. You can find the perfect model and find it's only there in Pro-E or it's only there in 3D Max, which can be a little bit annoying. Um, the risk of using something that's not run by SOLIDWORKS, unfortunately. You'll also notice that um, probably most of the people who upload stuff are male, as there's a lot of cars and guns. Um, 
in GrabCAD, but that's sort of what happens. So what I want to do is I'm going to go and look for my sofa. Um, and you can see there's a whole range of sofas here, uh, which will be in a number of formats. Now actually the one I want is this one, this Verishin sofa. So I'll go and have a look at this particular sofa. Now the reason I've gone for this sofa is I knew it was available in SOLIDWORKS format, which just makes my life easier for this demo. Um, there, it will occasionally be available in formats which you can open in SOLIDWORKS, but you may need to fix a bit, um, so just be aware of that. So I want to go and I want to download this, uh, this zip file. Again, what I'm going to need to do is log in. Um, so you'll have to apologise, I forgot to click sign in first. So that'll take me back to the page again, and let's download it. There we go. So for all of these things, you need to um, have a, uh, a an account, but again, the account is free. And actually, the account on GrabCAD allows you to upload models for you to share with other people. Um, feel free to go and have a look at the Innova Systems uh, profile. There's some stuff for which we've uploaded on a couple of occasions. There's not a lot, I admit. So let's save that file. Now I want to unzip this so that I can bring it into my overall model. And let's open up the assembly. There we go. So we've got our, our couch. So let's come back. We will insert that. And again, there's some mates required for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the bottom of the... Um, oops, no, misclicked. I'm going to make the bottom of the sofa. I've gone and missed it. That's careless of me. That one. And the floor. It'd help if I hadn't unselected the sofa. So that's now the sofa stuck on the floor. And then I want to make sure the sofa faces my TV. So we will do that. Spin those around. Ooh, there we go. So it's now facing my TV and I can move it around in my room to find the, the perfect point for my sound system to work with. So that's how you download stuff from GrabCAD, how you don't get stuff from 3D Content Central. Now we don't have any appearances and I did mention the Modo appearances for SOLIDWORKS. Now we can get hold of those. What we need to do is you need to go to your SOLIDWORKS customer portal account. If you don't have one, uh, I really recommend you set one up. So you go to the SOLIDWORKS website, click login. Um, choose customer portal if you've never had one you can create an account using your serial number um, I'm just gonna log into mine and then inside this customer portal account there is a link to the modo appearances which will be down in the bottom left in a second while we're in the customer portal account as I said I really recommend you have one there's a number of different things you can do inside your customer portal so you can look at the knowledge base which will give you some uh, ability to find problems or find out whether things are known bugs you can also get hold of all your SOLIDWORKS updates um, you can get hold of any API examples and, and uh, training files and things via here as well uh, you can also get to the forum account via here and for those of you who are looking after a large number of uh, seats, there's a CAD admin dashboard, which is something which is relatively new. It should tell you where things are installed, and so you know what machines everything's on, and things like that. But I want this Photo View 360 appearances link. I click on here, and then we can go to the Luxology website, which is where the Modo appearances live. And we get a nice uh, page, which is uh, welcoming us as a SOLIDWORKS user. This link is the important one. Take me to the assets. Show me the money, as they say and you can start to see some appearances which uh, have been made. The material gallery link will then take you on into the actual gallery where all the materials are. And as I said, there are there are hundreds and hundreds of these things. Um, we've downloaded a whole load of them uh, to play with here. Somebody has, cr they've created all of the RAL colors. So if you know your RAL color, you can go and find the exact RAL color there. And you can see they start to get a little bit more uh, weird and wonderful as we go on. Um, so we have wolfhound hair for some reason. Um, LEDs. Now these ones which are showing really deep textures um, they do look like that uh, when you actually render it and I think if we go on a couple more I think there's one where somebody has created some ears there we go um, and that does look like you've got ears growing out of your surface 
and as you can see, I'm still clicking through. We're going through sort of five pages at a time here, and there's loads of them. There's grasses and all sorts. So if you're doing scenes, you want it to look realistic, you can probably find something that uh, does what you want. Now, actually, if we go uh, back a page, what I spotted was we've got Elmo fur down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, choose to download this Elmo fur, and we'll apply this to our sofa. Uh, so if I choose download, and again, we're going to save this. And let's get to my downloads. And we've got our Elmo fur. Now what we need to do is we need to create a folder in the design library for these to live in. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy that. And then we're going to paste it into a folder that I've already prepared, uh, always be prepared, um, which is going to be my Modo Appearances folder. So we're going to paste it in there, and then all I need to do is unzip it. So there we are. We've got that. That is prepared. It's just got a couple of files in it, Luxology Appearance and an XML document for, under, for SolidWorks to understand it. Um, and then in SolidWorks, if I jump back to my model, under my appearances, what I need to do is I need to create a file location for these Modo appearances. So we're going to choose Add Folder, and then I'm going to go and oh, go to the right place and I'm going to add those Modo appearances as a location. And we've got Modo appearances, and inside there, you can see we've got my Elmo fur. So I'm going to apply Elmo fur to my sofa. So drag that on, and I want to add it to that whole component. Um, now, this warning that pops up is quite important. Modo appearances, you can download them. They look fantastic when they're rendered, but because they've got that additional complexity, they don't look very interesting in real view. So I'm applying this Modo material asset, it may look significantly different in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area than it does when rendered. That's just something to be aware of. This is probably going to just look plain red. Yeah, there we go. It's just a plain red color. Um, and that's really just to say, sort of show you what color you'd be expecting it to be. Um, and then I've got to apply it to the back cushion as well. There we go. So I've now applied my Elmo fur to all my cushions. Now, like I said, that looks very different um, when it's uh, in the SOLIDWORKS graphics area. What we want to do is we want to try and have a look at this uh, in an integrated preview. So if we bring those up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that one's there. And then in this one, we're going to try and use a camera view. Now, if I zoom in, there we go. So we're just peering over the arm of the sofa. This should hopefully go to a nice um, furry uh, uh, texture. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, when I've turned uh, Photo View 360 on, so just let me load that up. And in this window, we're going to go for an integrated preview. So just give that SOLIDWORKS a, a little while to work that out. So now the preview's got far enough, we can see that the uh, although it was a plain red texture on the actual sofa itself, uh, when it's rendered we get this uh, this fur type texture, and you can see I'm I'm just painting the uh, the area I really want to see most closely uh, using my mouse just to to clear it up. It's something uh, that SolidWorks now does. So to jump back to uh, the PowerPoint, we've had a look at all of this content and possibly a reason you might want to use it which would be the making up a scene to represent what you're going to do so looking forward uh, first of all thank you very much for for watching but also we've got some future webinars coming up the 24th of january uh, matt's going to be doing stress analysis of pipes uh that should say the 31st of january um we've got photo view 360 um with uh, sam i believe it is and then on the 7th of february i think it's alex who's doing some multi-body modeling as always if you've got any questions do feel free to get in touch we've got the email and the phone number at the bottom there but again thank you very much for watching